Hi guys, how y'all doing today? It's Thomas here. I'm doing fine. I'm on my Mac today. <laughs> One of the few times that I'm on the Mac. Because my wife has it most of the time. And I don't get a chance to do this on the Mac. But um, today, I'm finally going to get this done. Um, this is a podcast that I created with my best friend Barry uh, back in 2000. 19 or 18 um, we're gonna be talking about the keto diet also diet and exercise and how he deals with it also we're also going to talk um, I'm not going to completely extend it because uh, we talk about also faith and that kind of thing um, I probably will do that at another time uh, but I just wanted to, make, to get this out there's a part one and there's a part two to this uh, to this video, and um, and I'm going to do part one uh, later on. Probably next week I'll do part two, and then I'll do the the third part on faith also from his perspective, and we, and we just talk about this. So um, uh, this is from the perspective of two uh, fifty year old men who've lived a life. And uh, we talk about diet and exercise, and and uh, in a candid interview, um, we we discuss this. Um, so I just wanted, to, you know, just to let you guys know about this. And um, so um, it's a it's something that um, you know we we wanted to at least talk about, and I wanted to get this out to you guys. Um, uh, for some reason, um, um, we just wanted to make sure that um, it, that we did this 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 part we did this podcast together, and I never got it out uh, in the three years it was supposed to go out, but for some reason it didn't. Uh, but, but now I have the opportunity to get this out, so uh, I'm going to be transitioning so you can see both Barry and I. Um, um, this is uh, we were at a a wedding uh, of one of our friends, and so we uh, took this picture, and uh, I'm going to show it to you now. That's uh, Barry and I. We were uh, in Atlanta at a friend's house, um, and we were um, had a great time. We were down in, in Atlanta for about a week, and. Uh, we saw some things, and we also, it was the last time we went, to, uh, we went golfing together. We went to an executive course. So this had to be about, maybe like about 92. About 2002. 2001, 2002. About 2002, yeah. Uh, so, um, so both our wives were with us. So it's about 2002, and we had a good time down there. So this is Barry and, and me together. So, um, what we're going to do now, we're going to start this podcast up. And uh, so this will at least give you some um, impetus as to what we're talking about with diet and exercise. Okay. And this is, podcast is being, is being um, sponsored by the Healthy Apple Tree. Um, this is my podcast company, um, Diet and Health, Diet and Exercise. Um, so I'm also a uh, life coach, and I also talk to people on, uh, I'm an executive life coach as well. So uh, we do uh, a lot of coaching. Uh, so if you need some coaching or need some assistance, uh, please um, send me an email or Give me a drop me a line. I'll be perfectly welcome to, to to talk to you about what's going on with you and what's giving you some problems. So, uh, but no other further ado, um, what we're going to talk about uh, is um, this podcast. Like I said, it's going to be diet and exercise. It's going to be uh, Barry and I. Um, uh, Barry is no longer with us. He, he's deceased. Uh, he died about two years ago, so this is going to be a posthumous podcast. 
Um, so um, we wish him the best, and he was always in our corner. So we're just going to um, say thank you. And you're going to listen to podcasts. I'm going to be with you on the podcast. And, and um, so um, here we go. We're trying to get this started now because, well, <laughs> I'm on my Mac, and I've never done this before, but we're going to try and get this started anyway. So, here we go. Every other weekend, I try. Right? But today, I have a special guest. Uh, damn long. And he knows me too damn well. So, I'm over at his home, and he invited me over here to share some liquid refreshment, adult style. And then also, we're going to talk about some, some topics, uh, but the key thing I want to talk to him about is, is his diet and how he how his health has been going. A couple of weeks ago, well, a couple of months back, I did a dichotomy between various people. Um, you remember the podcast with my son and how he deals with his attitudes about eating and how he likes to eat and what things that he looked forward to in doing proper diet and exercise. He's also tries to be an athlete. Then I also brought uh, my nephew, Aaron. Uh, he's in his mid thirties and, uh, he has been trying to <laughs> uh, leave me alone, man. He's a, he's a character, but, uh, uh, Aaron, Aaron, he's, uh, He's my nephew, and we've been <laughs> talking to each other for a long time. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, sorry. He's a character. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we talked to him about his diet. And that. Then uh, we also talked to my brother-in-law, Michael, and we talked to him, and then also talked about some spiritual quest also with him. And now we're going to speed this up to my um, best friend and uh, brother. His name is Barry Phillips. And uh, Barry, welcome to the Healthy Apple Tree Podcast. I'm very glad to see you, and I'm very glad that you invited me to your home. Say hello to the folks. Hello, folks. Uh, and uh, I'm glad to be here. Okay. Okay. And tell them a little bit about you. Don't say anything, but just, just briefly, well, you know, what do you do, and you know, and what, and how do you deal with eating? Well, um, wow, uh, where do I start? Just start at the beginning or at well, the end. I, I uh, you asked what I, what do I do? Uh, I've been a deputy sheriff uh, in Baltimore City for twenty five years, and. Uh, a very good deputy sheriff, my ass. I try to be. I'm a sergeant. He's, now. he's I, fair. I try to be fair. We were working at domestic violence unit. Uh, but as far as health goes, I've struggled with weight uh, probably since uh, since uh, we've been teenagers. I yeah. think I've studied, started, uh, struggled with weight uh, in my 20s. Uh, I, be, I became overweight in my 30s. I lost weight. I gained it. Um, just yo-yo, yo-yo dieting. Uh, I, I've tried different diets. I, I won't say I've tried everything, but I've tried different diets. And they haven't seemed to work except for one. Um, the Probably the most current uh, diet now is most, uh, it's, uh, most recognized as the keto uh, diet or low-carb, high-fat. Um, that has worked pretty well for me. Uh, I had... Uh, I tried that about a year, I guess about a year and a half ago, I'll go, um, and uh, I had gotten, I was 356 pounds, and I was uh, considering bar uh, bariatric surgery, and I came across a website called dietdoctor.com, and uh, Dr. Uh, Einsfeld was a Swedish doctor. Um, Swedish chef. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> Swedish chef. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> But the, <laughs> I'm sorry. But his, uh, his, uh, we love to shoot a chef. <laughs> Long story. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, his his diet program has uh, 
consisted of the LCHF. Now he's converted. LCHF was uh, the low carb, high fat diet, which now, uh, if you go on his website, it's called the keto diet. So uh, basically, the same thing. It's uh, it's eating good food. Um, they teach you intermittent fasting and uh, eat when hungry and only eat till you're satisfied. And that has worked for me so far. I've lost about sixty five pounds. Well, that's fantastic. Well, that's good. That's very good. So how so? This has been going on for how long? Uh, probably like a year and a half. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. um, I'm mm-hmm. trying. Um, the last few months, uh, uh, and my family, not me directly, we've had some health challenges. It's kind of slowed me down, but I'm, I'm trying to get back on track. But it is it is a sustainable diet uh, mm-hmm. if you look into it. Uh, it does require you to give up a lot of things that we're used to. Mm-hmm. You know, like one big thing that. I had to give up was bread, yeah, and um, that was huge. But breads, pastas, you know, mm-hmm. you know, uh, rice, those high carb foods, you give up. You eat a lot of protein, yeah, that's um, true. But you eat good foods. You use instead of using margarine, you use butter. Mm-hmm. Use good oils. Yeah. Sweet chef. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay, buddy. I just had to do that. I just had to do that. You use good foods. Yeah. I cook with butter. I cook with olive oil. You know, we eat a lot of protein. Yes, we do. And a lot of vegetables. And, um, it, 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 like I said, it's sustainable. It's very sustainable. That's good. Good. Very good. Now, um, I'm going to draw you back a little bit here, mm-hmm. okay? Let's talk about the way we ate as kids, okay? Mm-hmm. So, I, I, I want to ask you, the way how we used to eat when we were kids, when we were growing up, okay, mm-hmm. as opposed to kids of today, and, you, and you've seen how they eat, and seen how, how we eat. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. Absolutely. So can you can you draw any conclusions about what we see? Can you see any, any differences? In, yes. Okay. Yes. So yes. why don't you go ahead and, and, and put that? One, one huge difference I, I've, I've noticed is that children of today, you know, um, they tend to eat probably a larger percentage of their diet is fast food. True. Uh, high carb. True. High saturated fats. Mm-hmm. You know, at least when we when we were younger, and and we're both in our fifties, so we were younger. We we did eat fast food, but it wasn't an everyday diet. You know, so we ate we ate our parents cooked most of the time. You know, doing we, we ate real food, just as I was uh, speaking about earlier. You know, and the occasional fast food is what we ate. You know, some French fries, maybe at McDonald's or something. But kids of today, they seem that every meal is is fast food or some fast food related. And as probably most people can see, there's a, a growing trend of obesity in our young children. Yeah, yeah. I want to piggyback on what you said because I agree with you what you said about uh, childhood obesity. Mm. I think when we were growing up, there was a lot more people outside exercising also. I remember mm-hmm. when we were, when especially you and I, we would be outside riding the bikes. Yep. We would be, even though we would eat. That was our summer. We yeah. rode bikes. Yeah, we rode and, bikes and yeah. we, we, we played play basketball and, yep. and we did a, a lot of things. We walked. We walked. We walked miles. We didn't have, and the thing yeah. about it was we didn't have the money to go to McDonald's. Yeah. That was always a factor with us. I mean, mm-hmm. and then the second thing with us is that we didn't care about fast food. You know, we ate when we wanted to, when we needed to, but we just enjoyed each other's company. Now, the thing about today's kids is that everything seems to be automatic with them. They seem to go to McDonald's because that's what they that's what they do now. 
they get into social media. There's McDonald's. They have Wi-Fi now. They have all your friends are going to be there. So there's really no access for exercise as it should be when right. we were growing up. Right. If I can expand on what you just said, like you said, uh, the parents, the children, you look at the parents because of uh, today, the children, their parents are probably in their 30s and 40s. Mm-hmm. And they themselves, you know, ate that way. Yeah. But we can't eat that way. So they're feeding their children the same way. So their meals, you know, you know, what are we going to eat tonight? Uh, you know, they, they, they go to McDonald's to get the value meal or whatever, mm-hmm. and they, which is loaded with saturated fats. Um, you know, Dairy Queen, Burger King. This is every night. Yeah. 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 Domino's, pizza, mm-hmm. uh, Papa John's. You know, this is every night. Uh, mm-hmm. High sugar, high fat, high saturated fat. Mm-hmm. And as we know that these things lead to later in life, we see obese, you know, adults. You know, their parents are the result. You know, it, it, it's almost like they should be looking in a mirror, I guess I, what I'm trying to say is. The parents of these children of today, a, a child is 12 right now, and their parent is, let's say, 30, and the parent may be obese because they're eating like that. You know, they should be more concerned with, hey, you know, look, I don't want my child to end up like this, but it's not that way. They, they're still eating that way, and they're still teaching their children to eat that way. We have a huge obesity problem. Yeah, and that's definitely true because the, the national average – of obesity is now almost 70% now. And it's a real tragedy. But the thing is that there's there's an econ- there's an economic model going on with this. It's because even though you want to eat the best you can, you really can't because a lot of people don't have enough money to go to the places to get the really good food. I know there was one situation where when I was in the the nursing school where they had a study where they had two people or two communities. One community was across the tracks and all the people, they had to be African-American and they had no access to fresh fruit and vegetables where across the tracks there was another economic situation going on where the people did have access to better markets, where there's a lot more fresh foods available. And it seems that these people who had the, the better market, had the better access, had better lifestyles. And it's to me that there is an economic model that plays in this situation also. Well, yeah, you will. I agree. I agree. There are, uh, uh, I, I think the, uh, the most common term that I've heard in the last few years, is food desert. Uh, we both live in Baltimore, and Baltimore has a lot of areas that are considered food deserts. You know, uh, particularly um, East Baltimore, there are sections of East Baltimore that I know that we know, mm-hmm. uh, Offord Road, North mm-hmm. Avenue area, yeah, yeah. that are food deserts. They don't have, mm-hmm. they don't. There's, there's no market. There's no market. Giants, there's no giant or shoppers or whatever type mm-hmm. of market. You, there's none in the the local vicinity, you know. And for and a lot of the people, the residents in certain areas are low, moderate income families that can't, you know, they don't have vehicles mm-hmm. or it's difficult. They have to catch several buses to get to those markets, mm-hmm. so they have to. They they don't have access to good foods fresh foods, and I'm not giving them an excuse, but I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's sad that it happens that way, mm-hmm. but from a law, from my standpoint as a law enforcement officer, I understand how those food deserts become, because they did have markets at one time, but then you have, in those low-income families, in those low-income uh, areas, you know, you have... Uh, a lot of pilfering, a lot of, of shoplifting, you know. So a market, uh, a market that we use, uh, let's say a, a, a medium, uh, a moderate income, or a, uh, a middle income family that goes to shoppers or goes to giants, you know, uh, they don't have that access because giants can't survive or 
shoppers can't survive in those low income but because of the theft and because of because of the shoplifting. So they lose that. And then everybody suffers. So Yeah. It, 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 it's a tragic situation. Yeah. You know, I I I thought about that, you know, because these as you people live in these areas, they don't have the proper access to for proper foods, but then mm-hmm. there is also a certain percentage that's that's pilfered away. Yeah. And that prevents people or like giant going into these areas because they have only so much that they can really account for. And this is a business. This is not I can give you everything. No, this is a business and have to have to have a profit too. There are communities right now that I that I can point out that you know of that you and I have traveled through right now and that their primary market right now is like family dollar. Yeah. Or, or uh, uh, yeah. yeah one of those stores. Yeah. And and they'll carry, you know, the you know, that, that that's not good that's not good wholesome food that they carry. But the the families in those locations they shop there just as if they were a supermarket because that's all they have. Yeah, that's all the access they have. Exactly. Yeah. I mean family dollar is at least they make an attempt to at least serve these areas. True. True. And they not and the thing that gets me is that these people in these areas they can take advantage of too yep. by the stores that they do have yes. to by by overpricing well, overpricing sure. but I, under, I understand and under quality food exactly yeah, right absolutely. but I understand they what they're saying is that I got to make a profit but you make it so that people cannot really exist in a certain situation because what you want them to have they can't afford so you're really forced into a, a your your budget is really forcing you into a, a really bad lifestyle. Sure, sure, absolutely. So that's it's, it's a sad situation. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, and it, it it it's a trickle down effect. Yeah, because the children that we see, you know, the um, the adolescent children that mm-hmm. we see, the you know, obese, uh, surviving off of McDonald's, Burger yeah. King. Yeah, this is the reason why. Yeah, you know? yeah. And and the corner. The corner we have uh, in Baltimore, we have a lot of corner uh, 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 Chinese food, you yeah. know, uh, yeah. that aren't really Chinese food, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. but uh, they're just mm-hmm. high fat, they're just high cholesterol, high yeah. fat, you know, yeah. places, and they, yeah. uh, it's, it's bad. Well, I'm going to switch gears with you, Barry, and then we're going to talk about your diet, like you, this keto diet. Now, I heard a lot about it, mm. and I haven't read that much up to it, but it kind of reminds me of the South Beach diet. It, it is. Yeah. It, it, it's it's yeah. similar. It's very similar it's to similar. the South Beach, yeah. Beach diet. It's yeah. similar to the paleo diet Yeah. Um, it, it, in that it's it's protein-based, um, yeah. as a protein vegetable, mm-hmm. no carbs yeah. at all. Oh, yeah. very low carb. Yes, which yeah. is said. Uh, keto is, is basically no carb. Yeah. Uh, if you, uh, your listeners, uh, go to YouTube. There's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of uh, YouTube channels now, a lot of YouTube pages that people uh, post um, recipes for keto keto recipes, which actually are really good. Some of them are really good, you know, and they would help you if you want if you were interested help you to try it, but um, I'm a, I'm a testament. Like I said, I, I lost, I, I was uh, uh, looking at bariatric surgery. Actually, that's how I got into it. I'll quickly run it and give you guys an, uh, uh, my story. Uh, I, uh, September of 2016, uh, I went to uh, GBMC uh, in Baltimore. Uh, they have a uh, bariatric center uh, to explore uh, bariatric surgery. And most insurances require you to uh, a six month waiting period. And what these clinics do, these bariatric clinics do, they have you come in every month, once a month. They have you to weigh in. They discuss dieting. They discuss how you're going to eat once you have this surgery. And basically, the surgeries 
they reduce your certain your stomach size down so that you can't hold with so much food. Um, I began that in that September. And when I, I talked to the, the doctor that was going to do the surgery, she said, well, because I was uh, 300, like I said, 55, 56 pounds. Um, she said, well, I want you to try to lose as much as you can because once I do this, once we do the surgery, your liver, because of your size, it will be kind of heavy for me to hold up. So uh, the more weight you lose, the easier it will be for me to go in and cut your stomach in. Fine. So I began, and I discovered, that's where I discovered uh, dietdoctor.com, and I started trying to eat. I, I went in there, I looked at the, I said it's, it's the low-fat, I mean, a low-carb, high-fatty uh, couple with intermittent fasting. And what happens is, and how that how that comes into play is, the the protein based eating that you're doing, once you void yourself of carbs and eat mostly proteins and vegetables, you don't get hungry as fast. So you can go longer periods instead of the traditional every four hours you're eating, or eating every two hours you're eating your breakfast and then you're eating a snack and then you're eating lunch. You can eat your breakfast in the morning. You eat till you're satisfied. I eat eggs, I eat turkey sausage or turkey bacon, and I don't eat anymore. I may eat that at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I don't eat anymore until dinner time, which is about 5 or 6 o'clock, and then I eat a good dinner of, of proteins and vegetables, and then I don't eat it again until the next morning. So in between that, I, I get anywhere from 10 to 12 hours of fasting where my body is feeding on good fats instead of the carbs. So, and... Believe it or not, I I tried this on faith uh, in October. I found it just about October, and every every meeting is I'm going back now. The the uh, for the weight loss clinic every meeting every monthly meeting they weigh you. So my first meeting after I had been on for about three weeks, I lost about ten pounds, and the next month I lost about sixteen, and it kept going. So by the time I got to the fifth meeting. Uh, I had lost almost 50 pounds. So I said, you know what, let me let me, let me me stay on this and keep fighting because uh, this seems to be working. And one of, and if you go on the website, dietdoctor.com, one of the things Dr. Einstein will tell you, you know, you can lose the weight without the surgery. You don't need the surgery. So uh, uh, this was a blessing to me. But um, And like I said, it's the sustainable in that, you know, like South Beach or Weight Watchers, you're not going to be buying meals or, or doing that the rest of your life. But this you can do. This you can do. And if you eat a little something, you eat a little cake, or you eat a little bread, it's not going to kill you. You just, you just get back on the track, and you go back to eating the way you were eating, and pick up where you left off. That's similar to a lot of people's story. Mm -hmm. And I know with myself, uh, I had thought about, well, I didn't really think about it, because my wife, she had bariatric surgery as well. And this was like almost 10 years ago now. <clears throat> but um, my but my thing is that I have, as a nurse practitioner, um, I had patients who would come to me and wanted me to do the same thing that you just talked about, um, counsel them about the diet and exercise. Uh, there was one patient in particular. She was going to have the bariatric surgery and over a year and she was going to see me every month in order to do the counseling as well as to the way up and everything like that and being involved with the situation and also learning from what my wife had been through i thought it was a very gratifying situation for this lady because she had also had problems with weight and she was looking forward to this uh to the weight loss she, she told me that she had some problems with um, weight loss in the past and she doesn't feel that she would have any success and then I had another co-worker she had lost a whole lot of weight also because this was back in let's say maybe 2002 uh, she had bariatric surgery also but she felt that she could do a lot better with the surgery and did it work for it, it, oh she looks fantastic but the thing that I'm going to talk about 
is that science has evolved. Back in, let's say, 1996, 1997, 1998, when you're talking about bariatric surgery, it was a nouveau thing. It hadn't been really become a state of the art. Now, bariatric surgery has been proven to be beneficial for a lot of people. They now consider bariatric surgery as one of the pillars of losing weight because it has had a lot of success. A lot of people have changed their life and changed their eating pattern, and now it is an effective treatment for weight loss. Uh, I look at, um, what's the guy's name from um, NBC? The, no, it was Scott. Oh, uh, I know yeah, what you're talking about. Al yeah. Roker. Al right. Roker. Right. He lost uh, almost 300, right. 300 pounds plus, yeah. and he looks fantastic. And the thing I want to say about him is that he changed his whole eating style. He now rides a bike to work, and he exercises a lot. He's that's changed weird. his whole lifestyle. That's, yeah, that's and it's, it's fantastic. That's a, but, but here's the thing. Let me, yeah. uh, and let me, let me, and this is something that I noticed also, that those, those of your listeners who are considering uh, will find to be true. Uh, when when I was considering it and I was going to the dietitian clinics and I was I compared that to the website and the LCHF mm-hmm. diet that I started mm-hmm. once I started it. They were very similar. Mm-hmm. They were they were almost identical. Almost identical. Okay. So in addition to what I'm saying is in addition to the surgery just like you said, you know, your wife had bariatric surgery mm-hmm. when she had it. They tell you that you, you can't eat, you have to eat a lot of protein. You can't eat a lot of carbs. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they it, it's almost the same thing, except mm-hmm. you're not having the surgery. Yeah. So you can do, you can you can almost do it. You can do it without the surgery. That's, it sounds right. cool. Yeah. But it, it, it does require a commitment, and it does require you to give up some things that we're used to. Yeah. We've been eating a lot of breads and we like eat a lot of pastas, mm-hmm. you know. But the biggest help for me, and like I said, there, and mm-hmm. please, you know, I'm, I'm inviting you yourself to go to the website and explore it. Mm-hmm. They even have, um, I, I actually, they, it's free. The website is free, but they have a membership section mm-hmm. that gives you access to more videos mm-hmm. and, and recipes mm-hmm. and, and diet plans on how to eat. Mm-hmm. And it's like $9 a month. Mm-hmm. So I had so much success. I joined the nine. I paid the nine dollars a month mm-hmm. to have the access, mm-hmm. and just because I want to help them to forward to keep this going, paying it forward. Okay, because it's good. I invite you to go to uh, the, the, the recipes themselves. Help you to get forward to move forward. Okay, because it, you know, it, even though you're cutting out a lot of things. There are some things you don't have to cut out. True. You know, like True. cheese. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> we eat a lot of. We yeah. we do eat dairy. We yeah. eat some cheese. Yeah. Uh, uh, like in addition, to a lot of protein, a lot mm-hmm. of vegetables. Uh, we use heavy cream. I mm-hmm. use butter. You know, yeah. I haven't used butter in years because yeah. you know, diet in. I was like, oh well. You know, you you, you got to use margarine. You got to use the cooking spray. Yeah. yeah. I cook with butter. <laughs> and I lose weight. And I'm losing weight. Yeah. And, I'm, and the, yeah. the food tastes good. Yeah. So that's what you want. But you're not you're not piling it on. You're mm-hmm. eating until you're satisfied. And you stop. Yeah. That's it. Well, that, that, and you try to go as long as you can before you eat again. Okay. Okay. It's that well, simple. It's that, that simple. You break the cycle of the three, the, mm-hmm. the breakfast, lunch, dinner, dinner cycle. cycle. You're yeah. breaking that cycle. Okay. Right? So you eat in the morning. Maybe I, my cycle is I eat in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I eat me. Okay. I don't even eat lunch. Okay. Lunch is not even in my cycle anymore. Okay. And, there, and and there's different ways you can do it. You can mm-hmm. you can adjust that cycle to your work schedule, to mm-hmm. your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You can adjust it. Mm-hmm. You know, you may want to fast. You may want to mm-hmm. you may want to uh, extend your fast mm-hmm. instead of twelve hours. You may want to extend it lo- longer, a couple okay. days. It doesn't hurt. Okay. It doesn't hurt, and it, and it actually helps because your body starts when it starts. They call it keto because it. it, it it, it focuses around ketosis, getting your body into ketosis, where it's in the ultimate fat burning mode, where it's going to burn the most calories. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't have to get into the ultimate, but if you if you stay along the line of of, of keto, you will lose. Yeah, you know the ketosis is supposed to help you lose faster or lose more weight. But it, it, like my doctor said, even though he's not a 
he understands keto. Like he said, you know, you don't put it on overnight. You're not going to lose it overnight. Mm-hmm. So it takes time for you to gain the weight. It's going to take a little time for you to lose. Yeah. So you just have to be patient. Yeah. But this, this at least you see the benefit from. It. Yeah. Now I, I am familiar with ketoacidosis, mm-hmm. and I no, no, know ketosis. Ketosis. Two, two different things. Yeah. Okay. Ketoacidosis yeah. and ketosis. So right. I am familiar. We're talking with, about ketosis with, with right. both with both terms. Right. And I know with um, the South Beach diet, it's, it sounds completely similar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're eating mm-hmm. the good carbs. Mm-hmm. You're also watching the fats, and also you're 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 eating a lot better, healthier foods, which is and, good. And this is the best part that I didn't, mm-hmm. that I didn't tell you. If you once you go on a diet, you don't have to count calories. Yeah, and that's the best part. Yeah. You're not counting calories when you're eating. Mm-hmm. That's what he's stressing. I thought that was the best. That was that to me was mm-hmm. the best. It was like because you know, in every day you're like, well, you know, I, well, I had 200 calories here. I had this pill. No, you eat. You're eating good food. You eat until you're satisfied. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's what, it. What about cheating? Do you ever cheat? Yes. Cheating happens. <laughs> cheating happens. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Case in point. Case in point. You brought, over, you brought over some of your wife's cake that she made. Okay. I probably will get a piece of that. <laughs> so I'm not going to say I'm not going to cheat. But... You have to get back on that horse and keep going. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, you know, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I know that so we're all human and we all can make mistakes. Yeah. But um, cheating is something that happens. So when you do cheat, do you do you feel bad about when you did or do you you just, you know? I did. I used to. And I understand that. But mm-hmm. no, not anymore. I mean, it's just, mm-hmm. it's an understandable, it's a necessary. Yes, you it think it, because in, in any diet, Yes, you know, there's going to be a moment that you're going to mm-hmm. veer, for, especially if it's going to change. If it's not something that you can sustain the rest of your life, you're going to change. Yes. You know, it's not that mean. Uh, me saying that meaning, okay, well, I'm not going to eat any sugar. I don't. I can't have any sugar in this diet. Um, does that mean for the rest of my life I'm not going to have a piece of cake or a piece of pie? No, no. Somebody's. Gonna eat, you, I'm going to eat a piece of pie. Or eat, eat, and I'm diabetic. I'm going to eat a little something. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, people that aren't diabetic, they're, they're going to sustain They're going to go, well, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. You know, i got to have a piece of cake because it's my birthday. i got to have a piece of cake. You don't have to have a piece of cake. You, you want a piece. You want a piece. You're right. <laughs> you don't have to have it, but you want it. Yeah. Right. But a piece is not going to terminate everything, every good thing that you've done. But I mean, if you sit there and eat a whole pie, now that may be a problem. <laughs> right. Right. That may be a problem. Well, but, that uh, might yeah. Be, yeah. but I mean, a yeah. slice shouldn't hurt yeah. you. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You get back on that horse. That's yeah. it. Well, I'm going to um, give this information to a little, a little part for you, um, because when I teach diet and exercise to my pa- the patients as well as to other people, uh, back when I was in nursing school, I was talking to a, a, a nutritionist doctor also, and he told me about the three bite rule. He told me that you can have whatever you want. If you want cake, if you want pie, if you want lasagna, only take three bites of it. <laughs> because they did a study Maybe. where you take three bites of whatever you want and then leave it alone. Okay, And it does work. The first bite is you see it. Yeah. Okay? I, like, for example, my thing is, I love Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Okay? That, wait a minute. How, how, much, how much do you love Reese's Peanut Butter Cups? Oh, I love, I will divorce my wife. <laughs> so they're just the ultimate and delicious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you can only eat three bites. Yes. Okay? <laughs> okay? So, what I do, well, let me go back. Okay? If you had a slice of pie, Apple pie, okay? <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, we're about to do the Reese's Cups. I'll get back to that, okay? Yes, sir. Stand your, hold on to your horses, yes, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. No. So, you can have three pints of whatever you want, okay? Pie, cake, uh, lasagna, okay? You peanut just, butter. Peanut butter. Mm. And then what you do, you take three bites. The first bite is, yes, I got this. I want delicious. I want to eat this 
so much. The second bite is like, okay, yeah, I can get the flavor now. I feel real good. I'm eating it. Yes, I can taste it. The third bite is more of like a satisfaction that yeah, I've eaten it, I've tasted it, and I feel it. And then the fourth, five, six, seven, they're just filler. You don't really need those. You just need the first, second, and third just to suffice you so to, to get your body knowing that you did have this, this piece mm-hmm. and that you're okay with it. And then you could always put it aside and eat it the rest later on mm-hmm. the next day. Or you can share it. Now, what I've known is that in my home, food tends to last longer in my home because I tend now to eat according to the serving size now. Because I remember when I when I was going, when I was young, my dad loves uh, vanilla wafers. I love vanilla wafers. I get a whole hand in that sucker. I mean, it's it's good. But what I do. Yeah, he loves vanilla wafers. And also uh, ginger snaps, too. Yeah, so, yeah, ginger, everybody loves ginger snaps. So, what I do is now I just eat the serving size and it's, it just stops. And I've noticed that if I eat the serving size, the food actually lasts longer so that I can come back more frequently. Uh, instead of it's, the food's gone within a day, three, four, five days. Just eating the server size. Because for me, a server size used to be my whole handful plus a couple more. But now if you eat the server size, you're eating a slower rate. You're getting satisfied a little earlier. Plus, there's a, a better outcome too because your, your food lasts longer. Now, back okay. to the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Okay. Now, you know there's only two of them in there, right? So, okay. what I would do is I would eat that one cup and I throw it away. Throw the other cup away? Yeah. Okay. You know why? Why? They make more. <laughs> <laughs> they make millions of Reese's peanut butter cups. That one cup that I'm going to throw away, is it gonna change anything? Uh, no. Is okay? it gonna change anything for you? No. Okay. The thing about that is I can keep it. I can share it, or I can just throw it away. And that's the beauty of, of what he told me about the three-bite rule, is that you, you don't really need to have all that with you. Yeah, go ahead. This is, I mean, I'll this give is, you a challenge. Okay, all right. For a month. And okay. we'll come back to your podcast. <laughs> all right, a month. All right. Oh, he's, he's In March. Me. March 1st. March 1st. What I is want it? you to give up. I want you to give up breads. Yeah. I'm probably giving give up bridge. I don't. I don't. I don't bread, do. Well, listen, ah. breads and pasta. I'm I want you to give up, up. <laughs> and sugar for a month. I'm going to be for a up. month. I've already done it. Okay, for a month. I've, I don't want I, none. I've none. I've already done. The only okay. the only sugar that I do. No, no, no. no there's no only the, for a month. I don't. The want only you sugar none. I eat Zero. is the is the um is the imitation sugar that we use to the, 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 the tivia. I got it. Okay, I guess. and the Splenda. Okay, right. Right. I have no sugar in nothing. Right. Okay, I don't even eat pasta. Okay. I don't even bread. eat bread. bread. No, okay. yeah. Right. And also, the the, the custom thing is that you should eat bread at the end of a meal, than at the beginning of the meal. The reason no. why. For hold, a month. It, For a month. hold it. Let me just say, it. if you eat the That's bread it. at the end, you're already full, so you're not gonna eat as much bread as you did at the beginning of the meal. Right. That's. That's what it is. And what were you going to say? Well, it's not. It's not eating the bread. It's the. I mean, it's not when you eat the bread. Mm-hmm. It's eating the bread itself mm-hmm. because that bread turns to sugar. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, right, which is it's carbs mm-hmm. and it's just it, it, it defeats the purpose. You're not going to lose anything by eating. So, don't eat any of it for a month. Just well, no breads, no pasta. I don't really do that. Right, just four more. Yeah. Have you eaten bread this month? Um, I did have a sandwich. Yes. Yeah. No sandwiches. Yeah. If you eat, a, if you eat, if you eat a sandwich, take the bread off and just eat the meat. Yeah. Well, I meat. did. Well, I did also have 
Um, I have flat bread. Right. No flat bread. Not for a month. No flat bread. No bread. Okay. No pasta. No sugar. For a month. All right. Just what? just one month from from March first to one, and March first weigh yourself, and then March thirty first, well, and April first. I'm sorry, April first weigh yourself, and just tell me what you said. Tell me what you okay. find. Well, I, well, tell me okay. What you well, find. well, I tell you what. Why don't we just do this? Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll do another podcast. We'll do another podcast. We'll do another podcast. You want to do it March first? Oh, uh, I don't. We gotta be. I'm not sure. We gotta be in like on Saturday. So, all right. Get your get your get your Google machine out. Because uh, we're gonna. I'll get my my my, my, my eye, Oh, oh, I'm, iPhone. So, I'm sorry. My he used eye, to be a Google man. His 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 badass. <laughs> sorry, no ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting a little tipsy. Piece of, piece my gay ass iPhone. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. What day is this? March the third is a Saturday. March third. Okay. Right. So we're gonna stop March third. So we're, we're gonna do March third. March the both of us. Remind me. Just we're remind me. I'm remind gonna, me. Okay. I mean, I'm already on it, but I'm gonna okay. make sure. Just remind me. I'm gonna make sure that I don't cross the line at all okay. for thirty days. Okay. All right. Just remind me. So, okay. March. I'm on it. I'm just all right. March third. We're March third to yeah. April. To what? April the uh, April these. Yeah, April. The first Saturday? Yeah. Okay, April that'll be 5th. the 7th. April 7th. Okay. Yeah. All right, April 7th. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because right, I, so. I, I work that weekend. So I, what I do is I get off of work, and I come over here to beat your ass. Okay. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> and we look, I got a scale right in there. I'm going to bring the scale out. The first day, we'll measure, and then... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're, and, then we'll, uh, and we'll go from there. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to un- understand that I've been knowing this guy a long time, and and um, we we send signals to each other, and not just uh, time to do something um, unnatural. <laughs> so that's just between us because we we're, we're like that. We're, we're silly, right. but um, let me change the, the the dynamic of our talk here. Um, are you are you okay? He's drinking another beer, a light beer from Miller. I'm sorry. Three cards. Miller, Three net cards. Miller is not an official. So I'm, up to, I'm up to six net cards on my, Miller on my beer. Miller is not an official um, person or one of our sponsors. Sponsored. Yeah, 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 but I'm just mentioning them. Okay. And, and, and yeah. the McCallum's is zero and, net cards. I don't know about so that. Right. He's drinking the, some of the stop beverages. Hey, but uh, I'm going to get Yeah, him. but I'm drinking low carb. It's all low okay. carb. He's a low carb. Trust me. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now, we're going to. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that was the, the crux of, of most of the uh, conversation that I had with Barry. Uh, the next part will be on the spiritual side. We're going to save that for another time uh, because um, I just want to stick to diet and exercise, keto diet, that kind of thing. So I wanted just to, you know, just to bring it like that. And um, the remarkable thing about this, uh, this uh, listen to this um, conversation that we had. Uh, now it's been six, six, seven years now since that conversation, and uh, you know we've had a lot of ups and downs, and and uh, he's gone, and uh, you know uh, he yeah, he had a had a heart attack. That's the reason why he, he passed away. He had a he had a massive heart attack, and um, uh, he was found dead in his house. Um, he had retired from the from the um, sheriff's department about three years later. Um, and I told him, said, "Don't when people when people retire, that's when they start dying." He said, "No, man, that's not gonna be me." I said, "Well, can that be you?" And outside of three months, he was dead. Yes. Shock to all of us. Uh, so, um, so you know, it, it's, you know, it, it took the wind out of me. And that's my, that was my, uh, my number one ace. And uh, this um, podcast is uh, a memorial to him. Uh, we're, I'm going to pick up part two again 
where we do the actual weigh-in, uh, that was a fiasco. <laughs> Every time I deal with him, we we have a fiasco. <laughs> but uh, but we're gonna we're going to do that. So um, hopefully you guys enjoy the the, the podcast and uh, I'll just drop the line posthumously to Barry. Because um, he, you know, he, we, we, we try to do our best, but, you know, things, life is life. That's how you say life is life. So, um, so we, we uh, uh, give him a toast and, and, and a, uh, a smile and uh, what's up. Um, so, uh, so thank you very much for listening. Uh, I know your time is very valuable. My time is valuable, too. Now hopefully you got some entertainment from this uh, from this podcast, but also that you got some in- some enjoyment, but also some knowledge, because we all need knowledge. Um, you know, we all try to pass on some to to somebody. Um, you know, it might not be the whole thing. You might have picked them a little bit, but a little bit here and a little bit there. Well, that makes the the world go around. So. Um, I'm just going to say thank you very much again, ladies and gentlemen. So, take care. I'll see you guys down the line. Remember, stay tuned for part two. Um, and then, uh, we'll do the other part, uh, the spiritual part, uh, at the end of that. So, hopefully, by the end of this month, we should be finishing, um, uh, this complete podcast. Okay. So, you guys take care. All right. This is Thomas. See you later. Avita Zane.